Hi, I'm going to be informing you about the career of David Fincher, who is one of the more accomplished and well-known directors working in the film industry today. I'm going to start back at the beginning of his film career, back when he started uh, making music videos uh, in the 80s. And this is from SBS.com. Uh, David Fincher co-founded Propaganda Films in 1983. Uh, and this company also helped launch other notable directors such as Michael Bay and Gore Verbinski who are still working today. And nine years after that, in 1992, he got an opportunity to direct a feature-length film uh, called Alien 3. And the film did not do well at the box office. It was not received well critically. And this is because there was so much studio interference involved. Uh, so much, in fact, that Fincher almost gave up on directing after his experiences with the film. And three years after that, he was given another opportunity to direct a film. This was called Seven, starring Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. And this film made $330 million on a $33 million budget, which is exceptional. This gave David Fincher more opportunities down the road. The next one that he was, or the next film that Fincher directed was two years later in 1997. Uh, this was called The Game, uh, starring Michael Douglas. It's not David Fincher's best known work, but it was still um, received well critically. Uh, it did okay at the box office. So now David Fincher was starting to develop a bit of a filmography. And Two years after that, 1999, Fincher directed a film called Fight Club. Fight Club was not received well. Uh, critically, it was not received well by audience members. It didn't make nearly enough money and bombed at the box office. And this was for uh, a couple different reasons, but mainly um, it was because it was mismarketed. And this information is from IndieWire.com. Uh, the film was mismarketed by Fox as more of an action movie because Fox, uh, the studio, didn't understand what the film was supposed to be about. So they, they marketed it in a way that they thought would make them the most money, and it just ended up confusing audience members. So David Fincher was in a bit of hot water after this film. So, three years after this, in 2002, Fincher would direct a more simple film that was easier to market called Panic Room. It was just, it was a simple concept, a home invasion movie. But it made $200 million on a $40 million budget. And it was received well. And... After this film in 2002, Fincher was very stressed from uh, the strains of directing. He had um, very negative experiences, for the most part, directing the films that he'd made up to that point. So he took a bit of a hiatus. Uh, there was a five-year stretch from 2002 to 2007 where... Fincher didn't direct any films. Um, he worked mostly on music videos and, and television. And then in 2007, Fincher went back to directing and he made a film called Zodiac, which kind of marks a shift in Fincher's filmography. It, uh, it did not do well at the box office, but it was received very well from critics and the audience members that went to the theaters to see it loved it so this is kind of the second half of Fincher's career and after Zodiac uh, the next year 2008 Fincher was given his first mass budget of 150 million dollars to direct The Curious Case of Benjamin Button with Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett and after the critical success of Zodiac, um, Fincher was rewarded for his work on Benjamin Button 
with 10 Oscar nominations in that year's Academy Awards. After that would come arguably his best film with The Social Network, which got more Academy Award nominations, and now David Fincher was on a roll. That came out in 2010, and then the year after that, he came out with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Again, received very well, made a lot of money. It didn't quite make enough to make the sequels that they were intending. This was supposed to be a trilogy, but they only got the first film out of the way. And then three years after that, Fincher made Golden Girl, which is, which was his best box office performance since Seven. And at this time, David Fincher had solidified himself as one of the best directors working in the industry. And David Fincher also has a film called Mank that's coming out in theaters in November of 2020 and then coming to Netflix. So you might want to check that out.